Good morning. So I um, got my friend Christy Rice's book in. I ordered it off of Amazon. Um, and honestly, the day it came in, I was so tired. And I was on the couch for the night, done in my pajamas. And I saw that our little Echo Alexa thing was um, blinking. So I was like, hey, put on my notifications. And she said that um, I had an Amazon delivery and I hadn't ordered anything off of Amazon. So um, the next thing she said was that my Art for Joy's Sake journal had arrived. So I'm in my pajamas and done for the night, walked down the street with the dog to the mailbox, totally excited to open my package. And this beautiful journal was in the mailbox. And I wanted to show you and kind of even dive into the pages a little bit um, to show you how easy it is. And also the therapy that I feel when I start to paint in the pages of this book. One of the things that I love is that Christy says in this journal that you don't have to use watercolor. You can use crayons or markers or gel pens or chalk or just whatever you want that you feel moved to use. This is the book, um, not this book specifically, but her series of books that um, I found my love for painting in and so I owe Christy so much. She doesn't even understand how much I owe her. It was during a really just dark season of my life when I had started chemotherapy that I um, started painting in the pages of her first Painterly Days book um, and had no idea that I could even paint and learned the joy of art from her books. So let's let's dig in a little bit. All right, so first it's hardcover, which is gorgeous. And the colors are, in the pages are so beautiful. The pages are thick. They're watercolor pages. You can barely see that, huh? Um, and she wrote a letter um, to open the book up and um, gives you a list of exercises and talks about food and recipes and um, really what use what you have nothing fancy it can be your kids watercoloring um, watercolors or uh, for me I bought this um, this pan of watercolors it's a koi watercolor see it's obviously been used quite a bit um, it's their travel set so it's super small and I brought it on a plane with me um, it's the koi watercolors pocket field sketch um, they're Socorro watercolors I love, love, love them. And it has lasted a very long time. Um, and you can get that on Amazon. I also um, have a watercolor paintbrush. I'm not using anything fancy and a mason jar. So uh, you don't have to have anything fancy. You can use crayons or markers. But the pages in this book are so beautiful. And she gives you space to write things down that are scary to you. For me, the most scary thing was looking at a blank page that, oh my gosh, wait, I have to put something on this page? There's nothing in there. What if I mess up? And it doesn't matter about messing up at all. The really cool thing about this new journal that she put together is that um, on one side of the page, Christy painted the page so you can see what she did with it. And then the next side right next to it is that blank version. And so you can paint in the lines. You can just wash this whole page with color if you want to. You, what I decided to do was to make the pages that are right next to each other for me to kind of try to imitate her work on one side. And then on the back side of that, you have one that, another one to do. So if you feel like you don't love this side, you have a whole other side to play with. So my thoughts were that I was going to do the opposing page, very similar to what Christy had done, and then my interpretation of that page on the next side. And then she has nine blank pages where she offers exercises or um, just examples, or in this one she says to fill a cup with water, set it next to your paints, and spatter some random colors on a page so that now that you have paint on the page, you won't be quite so nervous, which is so true. I love this. I love these just gorgeous anemones on this page. And her watercolor paintings are so beautiful. Um, her colors are saturated, but yet um, beautifully diluted. It's just gorgeous. Okay, so um, then she has some clementines and roses on this page. And again, a blank one. And then um, the recipe for banana bread. The next one is pomegranates and figs. So she's got a blank page with an exercise on it and then it explains what she used on these pages. Um, so right here it says that she used um, 
whole bean watercolors, um, applied several layers to create that. So here's what she did here on this page. And then I started the, um, the blueberries and what I thought were kumquats and um, pomegranates on this page. So um, it continues. I'll show you one more um, in here that I had done before I show you that one. So here's another exercise that she had said, you know, just how do these colors make you feel and, um, you know, blend them and see what happens. And so I just picked some of my favorite colors or colors that I thought would blend really nicely together. Um, so here's the cactus page. So this side is the one that Christy had done. And then I decided to kind of try to make it just look like the page continued over. My colors are a little more um, bright and vivid than the ones that she had used. She washed a little more. Um, and then she added some extra details in her leaves and I just kind of let the paint kind of blend. I also used a, um, a glazing pen instead of watercolors for the, um, the cactuses, um, little prickles. I don't even know what they are, but this, this, this pricky points of the cactus. And, um, so then on this next side, I'll do my own interpretation of what I would do on that page. What I found is that Christy tends to use a lot more color, vivid colors, and I tend to wash my colors a little more. Um, so I'm going to play with some darker colors and see <clears throat> using more saturation in my colors. Um, so I'm going to show you this blueberry page that I, I mean, pomegranates that I had started earlier. Oh, here's the dahlia. So Christy had done this beautiful yellow dahlia, and I wanted to do one that was um, like an orangey pink with yellow tips on it. So um, I didn't quite make that one exactly like hers. And then she had some smaller dahlias that had pink, and I made mine with some purple. Um, so there's no rules, which is fantastic. So just do what you feel and play with these techniques. So I have my plain water here, and um, I'm going to show you just how beautiful the pages are and really how much they can take because I think some people are fearful that maybe um, these pages, which, you know, is not the most expensive watercolor paper that you can buy. These are, um, you know, it's a, it's a pressed watercolor paper. It can take a lot, but it's... Um, if you use a, um, I found I used a watercolor brush on one of the first ones and I scrubbed a little bit and I had some pilling of the paper. But when I switch to a regular watercolor brush, it's beautiful. They blend gorgeous. So I'm going to start on this flower here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some really saturated color here. Let's see. I'm going to go with, oh, I probably should have thought about this before. And make sure not to dip your paintbrush into your coffee. Um, because it doesn't taste so good. So I'm going to take this petal here and I'm going to just put some color on the outside of the petal and then I'm going to fill it with clean water. So I'm just going to rinse my brush off and then I'm going to put just clean water in the middle and watch those colors kind of blend. And then I feel like I want it to be a little more saturated on the outside of this petal. So I'm going to take maybe a little bit of a teal color and just set it on the outside of this petal. And then more clean water and just dab it in and let the paint do its thing. So you know, watch the water just de do this beautiful little dance on the page. I love watching it. So even if I added a little more blue right here, maybe a little more saturation of this light blue right here where the petal kind of comes up from the center of the flower. And just let it sit just like that. Just like that. That's all. I'm going to try to zoom in right there and see if you can get a better view. So, um, and then I'm going to do a petal across from it because I don't want my water to blend right there with the paint. So I'm just going to fill this petal right here. Um, just so that there's some separation in my petals. Um, I don't want them to all blend together. Now I could want, have them blend together, but um, I want there to be a little bit of definition between my petals. So again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to lay the color down on the outside of the petal really gently and watch it dance and um, a little bit with this teal. And then I'm going to wash my brush with some clean water and just kind of pull it into the center here. And I want it to be just a wee bit darker there in the middle where the petal has a crease. 
So I'm gonna put some indigo blue, like a really deep blue. Let's get some extra on there. And just dab it there. It's not gonna stay, because it's a lot of paint right there. So it's still gonna be super washed. And that's totally fine. That's kind of what I want it to do is stay there, but blend a little bit into the petal. And here where the flowers creased right there. So she's got these beautiful light gray lines that just disappear as the paint touches the page. I love it. All right, so, and then there's these blueberries on the page and you know how the boys and I love, we love to go pick blueberries in the summer. And um, when they're not quite ready, they're this beautiful little purpley pink color. So there are some really small blueberries and some super big blueberries on this page. So I'm going to, um, right over here, um, where these blueberries are, I'm gonna finish that little bundle of blueberries right there. So we're, I'm gonna take not my coffee water, um, the this beautiful, I'm not mixing colors, I'm using them straight out of the pan. So, but you can blend colors if you want. Um, be careful not to put my left hand, because I'm left-handed, um, into the color, into the wet paint, because then, you know, it just goes everywhere. So I'm gonna saturate that there, and then take the clean water and just dab it in the center and watch those dance. So pretty. And then I'll take this indigo blue, um, and then just put it on the outside of this blueberry here. This might not even be a blueberry. This might be a fig, but we're gonna make it a blueberry. And clean water in the center and just let it dance around. If I want it to be more saturated, I can take more of that blue and just dab it in there. There we go. And then just let it do its own little dance and dry and it's gonna be so pretty. So there's this blueberry right here. And um, I'd like to put another layer of paint. I feel like it needs to be a little more vibrant. Um, so that's called glazing when you put another layer of paint on top of it. So I'm just going to go around the outside of this gray line here. And then it's already dry. So I'm just going to take a clean paintbrush and just put that around it and let it just re-dance on top of it. And it just makes it a teeny bit darker. And you see these pages can just handle so much water. I mean, like on this petal here, that's a lot of water that's on there. And the pages might start to buckle when it's wet, but as soon as they're dry, it flattens out, I promise. So I'm gonna show you one of these um, kumquats. Kumquats um, were my grandfather's favorite. So I was really excited to see kumquats in this, um, in this book because it really just reminds me of him. Uh, so I am going to grab some orange. Let's just use some orange here. And again, I'm gonna just grab this orange right out of the pan here. And I'm gonna just this one right here, put the orange on the outside of the, this line. And I can go in and put um, a deeper color in the stem or whatnot. And so now that I have the orange on the outside, I'm now gonna put some yellow, just again, yellow right out of the pan. Um, not the lightest yellow, like the second lightest. So here's my pan, right? And so I'm using not this yellow, that's a pretty transparent yellow I found, but this one, right? Just right out of the pan. And um, I have my brush pretty saturated with color right now. Can you see, can you see that? And I'm gonna put that right in the center. So it's really thick. It's not gonna blend with that orange right away. So you can see a really big definition in those lines. So now that I have that, I'm just gonna try to blend those two. I don't want it to look like it has a solid orange line with yellow in the middle. So now I'm gonna clean my brush off and I'm just gonna dab some water in there and let those colors blend together. Cause you know, an orange or a kumquat is not all orange and it's not all yellow. So now I'm taking some more orange just on the tip of my brush, pretty, pretty saturated color and just kind of dab it around there a little bit and let it blend. There, I think I like that. And then on this dry fruit, I'm gonna take a little bit of a brown and dab it in right there in like the little belly button of the fruit there, just like that. Yeah. So 
This is Christy Rice's book, The Art for Joy's Sake, and there are so many beautiful pages in this book, and she teaches you so many techniques. Plus, there's YouTube pages galore that um, you can go into any of her YouTube channels and um, check out her Painterly Days series and now the Art for Joy's Sake journal. The pages are gilded on the corners with a rose gold, and there's a gold um, band for you to um, mark your pages. Let's see, I don't want to move this too, too much because I have wet paint, wet paint now, but um, a beautiful gold band to use as a bookmarker, plus there's a gold ribbon that you can use as well. Um, and you can write in this journal, or you can paint in this journal, you can color in this journal. It's just beautiful. I, it's really, really gorgeous, and I recommend it highly. In fact, um, kind thought of you today for Christmas presents. So enjoy the Art for Joy's Sake journal, and uh, have, you know, just enjoy art for joy's sake. Don't feel like it has to be perfect. It does not have to be perfect. It, once you get the paint on the page, it's your art and that's all that matters. So enjoy it, have fun, and um, find your love for being creative.